in the ring with our own Mark Chanel. Hulu Theater at the world's most greatest arena, most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. This is Boxing, this is Top Rank, presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum, brought to you this evening by Boost Mobile, Money is Power, by Bud Light, the official beer of celebrations, and by AutoZone, get in the zone. This bout is scheduled for six rounds in the junior welterweight division. Our judges at ringside, Ron McNair, Tony Berlillo, and Don Trella. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Danny Schiavone. Introducing first out of the blue corner, he weighed in at 139.2 pounds, wearing black trunks with white trim. His record, 15 victories with only one defeat. Seven of those victories coming by way of knockout from El Centro, California, Esteban. Introducing out of the red corner, he weighed in at 141.4 pounds, wearing black trunks with red and white trim. His record perfect, five fights, five victories, no defeats. Four of those victories coming by way of knockout. A 2020 U.S. Olympian in Tokyo from Cleveland, Ohio. and Duke and Nico to all get on board with the theme. So a couple more costumes to come on the eve of Halloween, but I like this, Tim. I, I, I love it. Look, the Spider-Man, ah, the tiger's more vicious. He should have came out of, it's a tiger. He's going in with the theme of Halloween tomorrow. Oh. My, my four-year-old son will also be Spider-Man for Halloween. <laughs> Maybe you can let me borrow it. I could have saved some money on right. the costume for it's, Kingston. Exactly. <laughs> Nonetheless, he is in the ring now and all, every bit of that tiger the way that he fights, earning himself a double stamp on your prospect list. Tell us why. What should we look out for from Tiger? I'm just going to let you know right now. It's all about control. He controls the ring. Every aspect from the inside, the outside. It's all about making your opponent dance to your rhythm and what you want them to do. And that's what he's shown me so far in his career. Taking on Esteban El Chucky Garcia. From Brawley, California, Southpaw. Yep, Southpaw. It's open stance. Right hands down the middle, straight left hand down the middle. Look for that from both either fighter. It's all about positioning as well. You know, that was one of the things they worked with with Sappho and, and Pernice Brewer in training camp with Tiger Johnson is just working on setting up combinations and foot placement against the Southpaw. Obviously, he's a very highly touted amateur. I've seen a lot of that through his amateur days, but in the pros, it's a little bit different. It's also about placing shots as well. And every shot, he's trying to learn that every shot doesn't have to be a death blow. You know, they can be set up shots. You know, when you're facing the southpaw, you want to blind them with something, a jab. And sometimes, apparently, the left hook, I mean, we don't talk about the left hook when you're facing the southpaw all too often. That's a shot that's hard for the southpaw to see because their lead hand is in front of their vision. Nice right hand there from Tiger Johnson set up off the jab. This is Garcia's first fight in 15 months, but he has had a solid training camp. Did some sparring out in Indio with the uh, Diaz brothers, who obviously you're very familiar with, and got some good work in there. Knew about this fight with plenty of notice. Is excited for the opportunity to fight here at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden as well. Big step up for him. Yeah, you can tell Garcia, he has good form. You know, he's not a guy just sitting there just, just throwing caution to the wind. He actually has good form, good technique behind the shots. He's just being outgunned at the moment. From Tiger. Down to the body. Good shot there from Garcia as he lands the right hook. And you see, that was timing. That's what that was. It was at the right time. It was good timing on that counter left hand too by Garcia. Yeah, that's what it, that's what it's all about. Timing, especially when you're fighting speedster. 
It's all about placing those shots at the right appropriate time to be able to land your offense. Garcia doing a good job right there towards the end of this round. He behaves, he behaves well under pressure. Some fighters do. Some fighters don't, Christina. Yeah, he lives for the moment. That's, that's for sure. right. That's right. Round two scheduled for six. Christina Poncher and Timothy Bradley back with me on this one. Inching our way closer to our main event, Vasily Lomachenko taking on Jermaine Ortiz. Also, Robesi Ramirez against Jose Matias Romero in our co-main event. Tiger Johnson, the second Olympian consecutive on this card. Wow. That was a combination. Head clash right there. You typically get that with Southpaw versus Orthodox fighters, especially when both guys lead with their backhands, their heads lined up on the same side. Saw a minor head clash right there by both men. Good right hand set up by that jab from Johnson. Oh, Back oh. again, then finished with the left hook that time. Christina, he's using the jab. Just a nice little flick jab up top. Occupies Garcia's vision and then just stabbing him right down to the body with the right hand. And it's interesting, you know, how effective he is able to be with that jab. Because sometimes, you know, Tim, obviously, no. But when you have an orthodox and a southpaw fighter, sometimes the, j the jab gets negated because it's both of their lead hands on the same side. But he's able to use it very effectively. And that just speaks to his experience. Only five professional fights, but a very highly touted amateur. Yes, it's all about staying on top of the jab of the southpaw or vice versa. If you stay on top, you're able to knock it down and come right over the top. And then there's sometimes I see guys where they actually come underneath to be able to land the jab, to find a lane for the jab. But Southpaw Orthodox is all about foot placement. You're gonna see, you see Garcia right there. He lands two shots down to the body. Maybe he was landed clear, maybe he didn't land, but his foot was placed outside when he landed those shots. Yeah, that battle for that lead foot position, trying to get on the outside, that's the position that most fighters wanna be at. But I, I, you know, I talk to a lot of young fighters all the time. They always ask me a question. They say, well, can I move the other way? Yes, you can move the other way. You can move to your right, but you just got to make sure you have the right distance. You got to make sure that you're not close enough to be hit with that backhand. See, Christina, the old school trainers, Russell Rodriguez, the guy that I started with, he told me if you move the opposite way, you're battling one hand. You're taking his jab away, and then you only have to worry about is the left hand, the back hand. But if you got to be at the right range, so that way you can make him fall short and then counter with your right hand. Look at Beautiful that. crisp shots Look at with that. the right hand there from Tiger Johnson. A nice counter also with the left hand to finish. <laughs> Very sharp with his shots. That's I mean, honestly, yes. That is going to be a solid fight. That is a solid test at this point in the career of Duke Reagan. Kind of like Troy Isley's test was against Quincy Lavalet. Those two fights we both knew were going to be tough fights. Love it. I love to see the young fighters tested early on. You know, nothing's given. Everything's earned in this sport. You know, and we want to find out how good you really are. We're finding out right now how good Tiger is right now. I mean, I believe this might be his first southpaw that he's faced. And I can see that, you know, he's a bit, he's thinking, he's a bit tentative at times. But that right hand that he's landing over and over at will, that's great timing by the young man. Great timing, great vision, great positioning. Look at that. Ooh. Now he's trying to turn the right hand up the middle. He sees Garcia leaning forward with his offense, and he's looking to hit him with a right uppercut. Yeah, he threw it there and just missed. Did not miss, though, with that jab right after. Down heads. to the Watch body, and the heads almost come together once again there. See, what's happening now is Garcia, he's sitting on the outside. Now he's saying, man, I got to find a way to get in the inside. So now he's somewhat selling out because he know he's down. And what that's going to do, he's going to open himself up to be hit with a big shot. Watch your heads, fellas. Johnson also showing, yeah, his good defensive prowess as well. 
But you see Garcia being a real pro. He's taking those shots well, and then he's digging himself down to the body, trying to invest to the body of Tiger. See, Garcia is doing the right thing. He is doing the right thing. He's attacking the body of Tiger. When you're in there with an athletic fighter, a guy that has more skill than you, very elusive, the body doesn't move. The head moves, but the body doesn't. I think that, that is the right call. And even just throwing a couple more punches, though, behind it, right? I think Garcia got to pick up the activity level a little bit because Johnson's so mm. comfortable moving around the outside. Oh, yeah. Johnson is not comfortable right now. I'm letting you know right now. Tiger's not comfortable right now. You don't think so? No, not, not at the moment. Garcia is definitely pouring. He's pouring on the, the combinations, going down to the body, like you said, Christina, and he's cutting off the ring well. He's putting a little bit of pressure, a lot more pressure, and he's landing more offense now. Yeah, cutting off the ring is something he didn't do in the first two rounds, but got him in the Guys that get Loma fits, guys like Pedraza that are very athletic. You know, guys like uh, Campbell that were very athletic. I, I was there calling that. You know, Tiafimo Lopez, yep. same thing. So this isn't an easy fight for Lomachenko. He's going to have to earn a victory, I believe. That's coming up later on tonight, right here on ESPN Plus in our main event. Three rounds in the bank. This one's scheduled for six between Tiger Johnson and Esteban Garcia. Garcia had a good end there to round three when he had Tiger Johnson in the corner. Let's see if he can continue to keep up that momentum here in round four as he is definitely letting his hands go more here, Tim, something that I was looking for early on in the fight. Mm, nice little frame game right there. Nice little post, I would say. Sticking that arm out, head control of Garcia from Tiger. See, those are old, those are old, old school tactics right there. See a lot of Shakur Stevenson use those type of tactics in the inside, controlling the head, because wherever the head is, the body follows. See, Tiger, he's landing the right hand, but he's not, he's not following up with the second shot, so. Garcia doesn't feel intimidated to come right in after. Occasionally, you see Garcia just let two body shots go down to downstairs, and he'll land. Mm, great, great place. Oh, my yep. goodness, yes. Well placed, set up. And that was one of the things I mentioned earlier that he told me, Tim, when we spoke with him in the fighter meetings. I want to work on what I show, what I learned about setting up my combos against these southpaws. I got a lot of good sparring to help me prepare. Foot placement will be key. And I, and I think as he's showing right there, he's done a good job. Yes, he has. And you know, the one thing that I like about Tiger is his is patience. You know, usually he's... He's 100 miles an hour. You know, it's really hard to slow down a young fighter. You know, he's staying relaxed, he's staying composed, and he's placing the shots well in this fight. Not a whole lot of wasted energy from him tonight. Now, 30 seconds has passed, and Garcia hasn't thrown a punch at this point here. First fight in the last 15 months, but he had some good momentum going there at the end of the last round. He did, but he couldn't he couldn't sustain it because that leather coming his way. And that leather has drawn some blood from his nose here in round four. At the hands of Tiger Johnson. Well, it's the range. He's fighting at the wrong range right now. He's on the outside, and Tiger's going to win that battle every single time. Garcia has to find his way to the inside. We saw him entering the building. So keep tuned in here on ESPN Plus for his conversation with Mark Regal at the conclusion of this fight here.
and he trusts Mark Kriegel. They have great conversations. Some of the best sound bites I've ever heard from Tiafimo Lopez have come in interviews with Mark Kriegel. Mark gets down to the, I mean, he gets down into the soul. I'm telling you. I'm, I learned so much about, you know, fighters just watching his pieces. And that's why he's a award-winning writer and part of this stellar broadcast team. All right, here comes the turn up right here. That's what you want to see for the young fighter. Go ahead and understand that his, he has this man, Garcia, weakening. He's landed clean, clean shots on him, power shots at will. Now I think he's looking to step on the gas and try to get him up out of here. Popping the head back just off that jab, or excuse me, off that right hand. Just missed with that lead left uppercut. Good body work there as maybe a little bit of frustration from Garcia. Hey, Garcia game. I mean, he sure game. He he, he's not going anywhere. He's 15 and one with seven knockouts. I mean, that only loss came against an undefeated fighter in Jesus Ramos you know, in 2020. Hasn't had a lot of work lately, but they know, just like all the other prospects, you know, they know what they're doing and trying to get out of their young talent does top rank. Yes, yeah, so it's all about getting them the right amount of resistance. I mean, you, you never want to get your, oh. your top prospect, you know, knocked off the, the rankings right out the gate. You know, you want to keep building this confidence and give them the right fights to allow him to build. And this is a southpaw, a tough southpaw that Tiger is facing. And he's dominating this fight. <laughs> But see that little resistance right there after landing your offense and now you got you got Garcia back in his face. There it is. Yeah, Tiger Johnson has not had a lot of success when he's backed into the corner. And you see that smirk, but sometimes that smirk is not because he's in a good spot. Sometimes you get that smirk because you got caught. See, Garcia is trying to trying to answer some questions or ask some questions of, I should say, of Tiger. Wants to see if if he can deal with that pressure. <laughs> oh yeah, each young fighter needs to be tested. Definitely on the way up. You know, I, I remember getting tested when I was eight and zero. I fought a guy that was 12 and 0. That's exactly, that's exactly what these young guys need. They got him with that left hook on that last exchange, but it was at the 10 second mark. But, you know, you talked about some resistance, but not too much. I mean, he's knocked out four of his last five opponents, but here we are going to the sixth and final round. Yeah, absolutely. See, that's what so, they wanted to see. So you, you, you got to be able to go, the more rounds you go, the more experience you're going to get in the game. If you continue to knock out these opponents that they're putting in front of you, they got to continue to match you tougher and tougher and tougher. So that way you do more of that, which I'm sure we'll show later on in the evening. But really nice to see him in the building and back at what he would undoubtedly say is his happy place, and that's inside the squared circle. Look, a lot of these young guys, they, you know, they build, they get a patented record and they build up to 18 and 0, 20 and 0, and then they fight somebody that's similar to them, and then they lose or get knocked off. So it's, it's important for a young fighter to be tested early on. So that way, he feels that pressure, he understands how to deal with it, and he learns a lot more from the competition. Oh, that was a nice setup right hand right there, Christina. It was, and he set up off the footwork. You know, he gets these little bouts where you see these. I mean, we we know that he's special, but then he sees glimpses where you're like, oh, we yeah, saucy. Yes, got that Laurie zona. But see that right hand? He's moving to his right. He's making the left hand miss, and then boop, right hand right over the top. So I don't want to hear that you can't move both ways. You can move both ways. Understand the principles of fighting the southpaw. Get that foot on the outside. Of course, you're going to have better results, but you can move both ways. Being, a, being an orthodox fighter, fighting facing the southpaw. Ooh. One thing I would say that 
I want to see from Tiger is when his opponent gets close, I want to see him bend his knees a bit. You know, he can step in and close the distance, but when he's on the ropes and he ties up, he needs to turn his back. Beautiful shot. Big shot there. You can tell that one has Garcia backing up. Headshot after headshot. Garcia in a bit of trouble here. Using his feet to get out of the way, but he's to kind of let his hands go. The referee takes a good look, and he's moving around the outside. Just about one minute left to go in the sixth round. First time Tiger Johnson's even been to the sixth round. Down to the body, a lot of work with that left hand. Tiger letting off the gas here a little bit. Stop. Tiger right there, empty. He just <laughs> he empty threw the clip. A lot of shots. Yeah, he, he just had to slow down. He's just trying to recover a little bit. Play a little bit of defense, that's okay. You know, a lot of shots, those heavy shots, takes a lot of energy out of you. Now he's recharging. Garcia's tough too, took those shots and has now recovered and come back himself. Just under 20 seconds left to go here in the fight. See, he's not going anywhere. And that's the test that I'm talking about. Yeah, you hit him with everything, but he's still in your face. And he just took Tiger Johnson to the sixth round distance for the first time in Johnson's professional career. And throw those type of combinations against Garcia. I mean, he's a, he's a fantastic young fighter, man. All right, let's see how the judges have this one scored as we send it up now to March enough. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds here inside the Hulu Theater in Madison Square Garden, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Ron McNair, Tony Paolillo, and Don Trella all score the bout 60 to 54 for your winner by unanimous decision, Tiger Johnson! Congratulations, Tiger Johnson, unanimous decision win, improving his professional record now to 6-0 with four KOs. More importantly, gets in the six rounds and has a good learning experience. It's been a pleasure calling the undercard fights with you, Great Tim, job, and with you, much. Andre. I'm going to send it up now to my partner, Mark Kriegel, who is sit standing by or sitting at the desk, actually, with Tia Fimo Lopez. Mark.